The objective of this experiment is to determine the diameter of a carbon atom, length of a molecule, and of a Gaudreau's number by forming a monolayer with stearic acid. This experiment requires a calibrated pipette and a specially cleaned petri dish. To save time, it's best to have one partner calibrate their pipette while the other partner washes their petri dish. Calibration of pipette. Obtain a pasture pipette. Cyclohexane will be used to calibrate the pipette. Fill a small test tube about halfway with cyclohexane. Next, fill a 10 ml graduated cylinder to the 1 ml mark. To ensure reproducibility, try to keep the angle of the delivery the same during the calibration and for each trial. Count the number of drops of cyclohexane it takes to go from 1.0 ml to 2.0 ml and record. Be careful not to break the tip. It should take 70 or more drops. If it takes less, obtain a different pipette. Repeat two more times. The three values should agree within two to three drops. If they do not, perform another trial. Do not discard your excess cyclohexane yet. You will use it for cleaning your test tube later. Cleaning of Petri dish. Obtain a Petri dish and measure the inner diameter and record it. This is one of the most important parts of the experiment. Wear gloves to prevent fingerprints on the inside of the dish. Wash the dish thoroughly with detergent. Rinse all soap off using a stream of water for two minutes. Remember that dust, dirt, oil from your fingerprints and detergent will all compete with the stearic acid and will destroy your results. So it is essential that the Petri dish is clean and rinse for the full two minutes. Do not dry the Petri dish with the paper towel because the fibers from the towel will lead to incorrect results. Formation of a monolayer. Fill the Petri dish about halfway with water. You may use distilled water or tap water. In fact, if it is cold in the lab, use hot water so that the cyclohexane will evaporate faster. We use the hot water in this demonstration. In another small test tube, obtain about 7 to 8 ml of 1.42 times 10 to the minus 4 grams per milliliter of steric acid in cyclohexane. Rinse pipette out with steric acid solution twice. Add steric acid one drop at a time. When you begin, the drops disappear quickly. Wait until each drop disappears before adding another. You can see the steric acid layer better if you look at an angle instead of from the top. The drops disappear more slowly as you proceed. Put the pipette back in the solution after each drop. Otherwise, the cyclohexane will evaporate from the pipette and the solution will become too concentrated. Keep the pipette upright so that the solution does not get into the bulb. When you get a lens-shaped drop that lasts a minute, you can assume you are one drop past making a monolayer. When the lens gets sufficiently smaller, it will start to move across the surface searching for a place to put the steric acid molecules. When there is no more space and the solvent is gone, the extra steric acid molecules appear as little bursts of small dust particles. The dishing contents may be disposed of down the sink because all the cyclohexane has evaporated, leaving steric acid, which is a component of soap. Repeat cleaning procedure for the Petri dish, rinsing of pipette with steric acid solution, and count the drops to form the monolayer a second time. If time permits, do a third trial. Dispose of remaining cyclohexane and steric acid solution in the waste jar inside the hood. For this experiment, there are two assumptions. One, the shape of the molecule is a square rectangular solid. Two, the model which is used to determine the length of the side of the square A is correct. 
Measure parameters of models. Two models will be given. With the ruler, measure the parameters L prime, A prime, and T prime of both models. To decide which model to use, calculate the length of steric acid molecule. Next, using proportions or the principle of similar triangles, D over D prime equals L over L prime, calculate the diameter D of a carbon atom for both models. Use the model that gives the best value for the diameter of carbon atom to determine Avogadro's number. The value may be found in the first discussion question on page 16 of your lab manual.